Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Girls Building Empires podcast. My name is Madison Reed, and I'm so excited to have you here. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate. I cannot believe that Christmas is this week. I don't know about you guys, but December has just been flying by, and it's so crazy to think that the holidays are finally here. And I know for many people, this is like, okay, it's vacation mode turned on and it's time to relax. And I'm kind of in that same boat too, but I think some people can kind of relate to this where I'm feeling like, okay, I have some more free time on my hands without school, without basketball, in my case at least. So now I can put more time into what I'm passionate about and be productive with the podcast. But you're right, I do need to take a little bit of time off. Call me a workaholic. I don't care. It's not really work if you love what you do. Am I right? Am I right? Anyways, well, at least that's what I'm going to tell myself. Um, But one thing we're doing over here at GBE is celebrating our wins this year. And we want to share yours. So we're looking to feature a few of you guys on our Instagram to share your wins with our 2.2 million person community to do so. All you have to do is be a subscriber to our weekly newsletter and reply back to the first email with a few details. There'll be details in the email on what to reply with and everything. And with it, you'll just share your biggest wins of 2021. So everyone, make sure to do that. And I cannot wait to see your beautiful faces on our Instagram. So go click the link in the show notes and we'll get started with that. But let me start off today's episode with a little bit of a story. So when I started the podcast, I got so many supportive texts and calls from people saying, oh my God, like congrats, this is amazing. It's so great. Good for you. And I would say that a majority of the people in my circle were and still are very, very supportive, which I love and it's great. And they know that I take this job very seriously as it's like the beginning of my career. But I also got people who, I mean, they wouldn't say explicitly certain things to me, but they would basically give off the impression of like, oh, that's cute. Like you're starting a podcast. That's cute. Or like, that sounds like a fun project or, oh, like cute. Do you you actually make money from that? And I can't help but think that some of these people have these assumptions because of my age, because I'm so young. Maybe also the lack of experience, but we won't get into that today. And I know so many young entrepreneurs can relate to this. And I think that we as young entrepreneurs need to do so much more to almost prove to people that we should be taken seriously or our business should be taken seriously. And I think it's time to make a statement and say, you know what? No, I'm not going to let those people discredit what I'm doing and how successful I am at it. And that's exactly what our guest today did. And she just went out there and said, screw it, and created her business. So today's guest is Madison Stephanus. She created 35mm Co. starting with only $250 that she had from selling a vintage camera. And she's building an empire. Her business launched this past August and has already sold out of inventory three times, you guys. She's a business student. She knows what she wants and how to get it. And I honestly really admire her courageousness to just go after it and be that strong female entrepreneur. And in today's episode, we chat about how she got into creating a reusable film camera, what has contributed to her brand's success, and continuing that conversation around the struggles of being a young entrepreneur in your early 20s, And how to persevere and gain that inner confidence so you don't need to look for external validations um, and reassurance to kind of keep going. And in today's discussion can be so relatable no matter what stage you are in life or what stage you are at right now with your business. And I strongly recommend staying to the end because Maddie has some amazing advice for our fellow entrepreneurs, but I just, I just love this podcast, you guys. I'm obviously obsessed with it. I'm kind of biased as I'm the host, but being able to have these conversations because one, it normalizes 
how we're all feeling because we're all feeling the same way a majority of the time or at least experiencing certain things and two because we get the opportunity to learn from some badass women hear their advice and their story and learn from each other so you guys without further ado madison stephanus hello maddie thank you so much for being here (laughs) thank you for having me i'm so excited to chat with you today yeah, we were actually just chatting about how we have the same name. Except you spell yeah. Maddie M A D I, correct? I do. I just like chop my name in half. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I go by I I think I know I go by M A D D Y. <laughs> I don't know. Different people give me different ways of spelling it, but it's everyone spells it differently. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Take it as whatever. But thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to chat about your business and a bit about your story. Um, for those of you who don't know who Maddie is, um, Maddie, can you just give like a super brief introduction? Yeah, of course. So I'm the founder of a company called 35 Millimeter Co. And we sell a film camera product called the Reload, a reusable camera. So essentially our idle customer are young young adults and teens um, and our business philosophy is really centered around making shooting film easy and fun so we're not a brand for professional photographers um, I'm not a photographer myself at all but essentially our philosophy is really centered around whether you want to take a quick snap on a night out or at the beach with friends and then relive that memory later amazing I love to hear it so let's start I like to start from the very beginning So you're a student, correct? Or were you a student? Are you still currently a student? I'm still currently a student. I've got about six months left of my degree. Um, Whether I finish that in the six months or not, I don't know yet. (laughs) Cool. And you're studying business, correct? Yes. So I'm doing, I'm majoring in marketing and entrepreneurship. Cool. Was creating a business kind of always part of your plan? Yes. Um, yeah, I think pretty confidently since the young age, it's all I've ever wanted to do. I don't actually remember having any other career ambitions before business. It's kind of just Mm. always been there. Yeah. So you're just like, Hey, this is the route I'm going to take and I'm just going to go with it. Did you have like an idea of what you wanted to start or you just knew I'm going to be an entrepreneur? No, not at all. I think that at a young age, I really wanted to go into fashion. And as I got older, I realized there is no way I can do that. So (laughs) I really like the idea of having like a single scalable product. I think Mm. product based businesses are so cool and interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So how did you get into photography or film? Like, like you said, you're not a photographer yourself. What made you get into it? Yeah, not at all. Um, I had an old film camera sitting at home and I was probably about 15 years old. It was big. It was clunky. I'd been given it as a birthday present. And so a couple of years later, I decided to sell it because I'd never gotten around to using it. And I Mm. popped it up for sale on a Facebook group and the bids went crazy. It sold for like five times the amount I'd listed it for. And so it was like I'd flipped a switch in my brain. I was like, that's it. There is something here. And so by the end of the week, I'd bought and sold 10 vintage cameras. I just started flipping them um, and I had no ambitions of it turning into this business but Mm -hmm. at the time it was just some easy money on the side right yeah you're a student you're like okay this is easy I just get you know a film camera and then post it online and kind of sell it for more wow wait so like you said you didn't have any experience with photography though like how did you know what you were doing not at all um I think that I really yeah I had no idea when I started YouTube (laughs) was my best friend The camera I sold initially was like an old vintage SLR. So it was a manual film camera. And the ones that I were flipping were automatic little point and shoot. So yeah, much easier to get a grasp on. Right. Very cool. So let's kind of get into how you started at 35 millimeter co. So when you sold that first vintage camera for how much did you say you sold it for? So I listed it for $50 and it sold for 250 Oh my God. Whoa. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That probably gave you like that spark where you're like, okay, this is something I can do. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I just put it up for sale because I wanted to buy like a pair of pants or something. So there's a bit more in this than just some side money for my clothes. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, that's amazing. So it kind of just went from wanting to buy clothes to creating a whole business out of it. Yeah, completely. Amazing. So you sold the vintage camera and you said you just kept buying vintage cameras and flipping them or films cameras, sorry, and then selling them for more. When did you get the idea? Like, okay, I'm going to start my own business. 
So I started an Instagram account probably about a week later and just thought I was selling them all on Facebook marketplace. So I just wanted to test out another platform really informally right. selling them through like direct message. There was no website in place. And because the Instagram page had zero followers, I ran a giveaway. I just gave away one of the cameras that I was flipping and overnight it gained like 5,000 followers. So wow. I was like, wow, okay, this is really telling me something. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like film recently has becoming more and more popular. I don't know what yeah. there is about it, but people want to shoot film. It's crazy. And I think at the start of my business, I really thought maybe this is just a trend, but I think mm-hmm. that every year, like a younger generation are rolling in and they're all still so interested in film. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's really confirmed that it's still alive. It's not dying anytime soon. Yeah. What do you think it is about film that makes it so intriguing? I think that, especially for us Mads, like we're the iPhone generation, we all grew up on our phones. Mm -hmm. So, and we're so obsessed with this idea of the perfect photo, the perfect Instagram. On film, you get one shot, you take that photo and whether you develop the role two weeks later, a month later, most of the time you can't actually remember what's on it. So I think it's that surprise of getting your film photos back. And we're probably a little bit more forgiving of ourselves when we see film photos because there's only one of them. I know that I can go through 200 photos on an iPhone and only like one, whereas I can see one film photo and go, yeah, okay, it's actually an all right photo. So I think just that element of forgiveness and reliving that memory later. Yes. Oh my gosh. I can totally relate to that. And I remember, I mean, you should shame me for it, but I did buy a disposable camera not too long ago. I back in the day. (laughs) Yeah. And you're so right. Like some of the pictures that came back, they were a little bit blurry. The lighting wasn't super great. My face was like, oh my gosh, if I took that on an iPhone, I'd be like, no, I'm retaking this a million times, but you're so right. It almost is like you're reliving those moments and it's, I don't know. There's something like nostalgic about it. And it's fun because it's just like the one shot and that's it. That's the moment that you get to capture. Yeah. I think it's not serious. It's literally just fun. Yeah. Amazing. So you created the Instagram. You, is this when you started to like create a website and you started to like think, okay, I'm going to create a product. Like what was that process like? Yeah, so there was a little bit of a journey between the vintage cameras and how the concept for the reloader came about because obviously I pivoted and changed my entire business model and my product offering. Yeah. So I flipped vintage cameras for probably about four months and then I launched a website, which did amazingly well, but I was just hitting dead ends because they were in such high demand and there was Mm. so low supply of them. And I guess the other huge thing was I had so many followers on the business account who weren't converting to sales because of the high price point of vintage cameras. Right. So I guess once I started hitting those supply issues, I thought I need a product that is compact and lightweight, like a disposable so that it'll fit in your bag on a night out, but it Mm -hmm. has a really bright flash. It's super easy to use and it's reusable because I did a lot of research around single use cameras. And I spoke to lots of lab technicians who work in film processing labs and you can refill disposables, but most labs don't do it because it is so time consuming. So they go straight to landfill. So mm. I guess that's where the concept of the reloader came about. And it was a long journey. It took us a year to get the product to market. So wow. I wanted to do it in three months. And I think I was really naive. I had no idea. <laughs> and I just kept <laughs> getting pushed back and back. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's how it came about. Amazing. And is the price point of the reloader like a really good price point versus film cameras that you can buy now? Cause reusable film cameras, are they still like created or are they just vintage ones? They're I'm like, so out of the loop. There aren't, no, not at all. <laughs> there aren't many on the market that are still manufactured. So mm. most of them are vintage. Um, the reloader is priced at 99 Australian dollars. I'm not sure what that is for you. But disposables over here are probably around the $30 mark. So you could buy three right. disposable cameras for the price of the reloader, which has unlimited use. Wow. Yeah. And it makes so much more sense. And like you said, versus carrying around this vintage old camera, which is, I mean, there's something about having something vintage and old, but it is clunky. I, my dad has one and it's big and massive and I don't want to put it in my bag because I'm afraid I'm going to break it. So having something yeah. that's small, like a disposable But if it's reusable, I feel like so many people our age are going to jump on that, which is what's been happening. 
I, I think I read somewhere that you have sold out numerous times every time you've restocked. Yeah, I really had no idea how it was going to go. So we only launched the Reloader. We're in December now. I launched it in mm. August. So it wow. hasn't been on the market for that long and we've sold out three times. Wow. Um, so yeah, we've pushed through a lot of stock, especially in the final quarter of this year. It has just been so wildly popular. Congratulations. That's so exciting. Thank you. Um, so how has creating this business kind of like changed your life? Cause I can imagine it's changed your life. Yeah. Um, I think that I really do think it probably just gave me a sense of purpose out of high school. I spent the year just working a casual job. So I've always worked since a really young age, but I think that being self-employed has been a real eye opener. Um, mm-hmm. At, you know, at our age, everyone is doing different things. So I think that it's definitely instilled a real sense of hard work, but also yeah. it's given me a really great purpose. Um, I love achieving milestones in the business. There are so many moments that have just left me in awe. Um, mm-hmm. Seeing you in my DMs, I actually thought it was, <laughs> you know, like the little spam messages and they say your name. They'll be like, hi, Maddie. I knew. And then there's like a space first. Yeah. 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 And I was like, <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is this? So moments like that, I think really do make you feel like what you're doing is so worth it and really yeah. fulfilling. Amazing. So wait, do you think you're, you said you only have six months left. Do you think you're going to like finish your degree and then do this full-time kind of thing? I definitely think I'm going to finish it. Um, I dropped down to, so the, for the last year I've been doing two subjects a semester. I've been going really slow, just keeping the workload to a minimal. So I'll finish it. It's just a matter of when. Right, right. Yeah. And then you'll just jump into 35 millimeter co full time kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. So what do you think has been like the most, like, what do you think has contributed the most to, I guess, your business's success? Because I see that you guys have, blew up on TikTok. Like your TikTok account is growing like crazy constantly. Yeah. I think I always say there are lots of pieces to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. TikTok was huge. I think, especially during COVID, we were really early adopters of the platform. So we were in Melbourne, in Australia, we were in a really harsh long lockdown. So I was at home working from home every day and I spent hours creating TikTok videos. So Mm -hmm. I think that it really, we were selling vintage cameras at the time. It really grew the business and got us off the ground and then left us with this amazing audience who was so ready for the reloader when it launched. So TikTok's been a huge contributor. I also think user-generated content has been amazing um, Mm -hmm. as well as, as, you know, paid ads and your organic. We have a really strong, engaged audience, which is really lovely. Right. So how do you get that user-generated content? Do you reach out to them or how does that work? A bit of both. Um, Yeah, I think it's pretty even. We often reach out to micro influencers, do gifted product if they're bigger influencers. It's often a paid collaboration. So it really Mm -hmm. depends. But I think that having a functional product, like people create really great videos of here's my film camera and look at the results. These photos are awesome. Those videos do exceptionally well because we get to show customers what this product can create. Exactly, exactly. So you would say that TikTok kind of changed the game for you guys completely yeah it really gave us a leg to stand on amazing amazing i kind of want to switch gears and i want to get your thoughts on this so do you feel as being a female young entrepreneur that people sometimes can like discredit or downplay your success or your brand um because you're so young I don't think I've ever, to be completely honest, I don't think the gender thing has ever really affected me. I do Mm -hmm. a lot of my business over phone calls and online. I think COVID really changed the way we do business. So I don't have to tell people my age. They don't have to see me. Mm -hmm. I think that if I was doing things in person, it would definitely be different because obviously I look very young. I just want to get your thoughts on like young entrepreneurs. And if you think that people kind of look down upon not maybe not look down upon them but maybe like discredit how successful they are because they're young they look at they could look at you and be like oh like that's cute but meanwhile you are selling out every time you release a new product like your product yeah completely i think that 
I didn't post about the business online for a long time. So not many people knew that I was behind it. It was only my close friends. Mm -hmm. And when I did start posting about it, I found it really hard to connect with other entrepreneurs because they were much older. And essentially I felt like it was really hard to establish that connection. And then Mm -hmm. I had an article come out a couple of months ago and all of a sudden it's like entrepreneurs are so much more willing to talk to me. And I feel like probably a little bit disheartening that I had to prove myself just to be able to form these connections and be respected. Right. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely that struggle like happening for young entrepreneurs. Like we almost have to work even harder to prove ourselves like, okay, just because we're young, it doesn't mean we're not being successful in what we're doing. Totally. And I think the assumption is usually that if you're young, your business is funded by your parents or someone else, which was just never the reality for me. Um, I know I say that I started the business with $250. That was from selling that first initial vintage camera. And then I went and later on invested a lot of my own money when I started working on the reloader, but I just never had that external funding. It was solely up to me. And I've always known that. Mm -hmm. Wait, so you fully funded 35 millimeter co yourself. Yeah. So I, I've been working since I was 15. I worked at the supermarket for a long time Mm -hmm. um, and I put in 50 grand of my own money. So essentially that was my house deposit um, or half of it. And I just thought, what do I have to lose? I'm 21. If I lose the money, I'll make it back. Wow. Wow. And you're so right. Like a lot of people, for example, like we're in our early twenties, they'll look at us and be like, Oh, like what they're doing. Like, that's so cute. Like that's a fun project. And you're like, hello, like this is my business over here. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. I think definitely you definitely get a lot of that at our age. Have you, has like any situations or has anyone made comments in that way? Not really. I think that I'm usually very quiet about the business. Um, if I meet people, I just, yeah, I just say I run a business and they're like, Oh, it's a nice side hobby. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. What advice do you have for someone who is kind of going through the similar situation? Um, I think that as long as you're passionate about what you're doing and you're confident in your capability, it really doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It's about you and your business. And I think that there is so much noise at such a young age. And often the people who have opinions are the ones who aren't in business. Yeah. So I think it's all right and well to go and ask for advice from people, but if they're not doing what you're doing and they haven't walked the walk, then how valuable are the opinions they're giving you? A hundred percent. I totally agree. And I kind of want to touch on this subject too. So when you're starting something new, perhaps a business or you have a business idea, I would say at least if I was in that position, like the first person I would tell would be like my boyfriend or my fan friends and family. And luckily I think that they would be supportive and continue to be supportive. But what advice do you have for people who are starting a new venture, but can't get past the feeling of constantly needing that validation or reassurance in order to continue? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that, I think it comes down to only you can prove it to yourself. You just Mm. need to have that drive and be passionate enough that if it lights you up inside, you'll keep going, you know? Yeah. So it needs to get you out of bed in the morning. And I think that seeking external validation can be helpful, but you shouldn't focus on that. It's about you and it's about the business and just believe in yourself, trust your gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I mean, I feel like everyone kind of goes through that self-doubt phase at one point in working on what they're doing. I mean, I've done gone through that phase. I'm constantly going through that phase in and out of that phase with the podcast where I'm like, Oh man, what am I doing? And then my boyfriend reassures me like, Oh, you've done, you can do this because you've done X, Y, and Z. Like, how do you work on that self-confidence? My, obviously there are hard moments in business. Mm -hmm. Um, my boyfriend takes videos of me when I'm upset and goes, like you're going to look back at this video when you're on a really high in the business and wonder why was I so down about this? I guess another thing is, yeah, it's really fun. I love that. I love that. I get so angry. I'm like, (laughs) you're filming me. (laughs) Um, But another one is I've got just like a Google drive folder on my phone. And every time 
something amazing happens in the business or I get a nice message that really means a lot to me, I'll take a screenshot of it and pop it in the folder. So Mm -hmm. if I'm having a down day, I will go and look back at all the highs because I think that business is so fast paced and can be really difficult at times that it's so important to go back and reflect on the good. I think it's really easy to forget how far you've come and what you've achieved. Yeah, I think I totally agree. I think there's this fine line, this fine balance of, you know, not getting too high on your horse, but also not getting too low either. And like reminding yourself like, oh, I've done that. I've done this, but also progressing and growing. Yeah, completely. Amazing. So what would you say have been some of the biggest challenges that you face when starting? We had a really hard time with our supply chain with the Mm -hmm. reloader. I think that it was my first time manufacturing overseas and we had a manufacturer that worked with really large businesses. And so my very first order, my minimum order quantity was still a significant amount of units, but they almost didn't take us seriously until we started placing really large volumes. Mm -hmm. So that's been a working relationship that has taken a long time. And I think we've slowly kind of broken through and gained a little bit of respect, but we had so much trouble getting production space and pushing out volumes to keep up with demand. So that's why we were sold out for such a long time because we were really struggling with supply chain in the back end. Right. But you would say now you're kind of, you know, getting a handle on how it all works. Yes. I think we're very sorted. We've got an exciting launch coming up next year. So yeah, everything's moving. Amazing. That's great to hear. So if you could give or leave someone one piece of advice that you wish you had when starting, what would it be? You could take a second. It's okay. (laughs) I know this is such a hard one. I think there's two. The first one is just do it. What do you have to lose, especially at a young age? Mm -hmm. Um, And the second would be keep your cards close to your heart. I think that I didn't tell people about the business for such a long time. And I often see people starting small businesses. I mean, all over my Instagram feed and all their friends are promoting and everyone's talking about it and they kind of just fizzle out and these businesses don't eventuate or continue. So I think Mm. that although it was probably a little bit of fear of judgment, I really like the fact that I kept the business so close to my heart. And I didn't share it with the world until I was really, really happy with the place that it was at. Because when I was selling the vintage cameras, we didn't have a strong brand identity. I wasn't happy with the branding. And Mm. so we spent all this time developing the reloader and pivoting our product offering. And I think that I only shared it with the world when I was really happy with what it had become. And obviously we have such a long way to go, but I think I'm at a point where I'm not ashamed to show people what I've been working on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. But like you said, I mean, there's that line of, okay, I'm not just doubting myself by keeping it to myself, but I'm working, you know, not undercover, but I'm just kind of hiding. I'm working um, in silence. And then when I come out, I'm like, boom, this is what I'm going to do. Completely. I'm very introverted. So I think that I do keep things under wraps and I've got a really small friendship group. So it's very much to myself. Yeah. Well, it seems like it worked out for you. It kind of, when I first, (laughs) I think I first saw your brand on TikTok. That's where I found you. And I saw it. I'm like, wait, I need to get a hold of this. And I like have been following you guys since then, actually. And it just looked like you guys blew up. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Most of our TikTok following are from the US and I guess Canada. So that's really funny that you saw it. Yeah. I'm actually from Canada. So there you go. That's probably me in there. (laughs) I know. I listen to the podcast too much not to know. I listen to yourself. So (laughs) wait, that means so much because I actually haven't been creating solo episodes in a while. I did do the monthly and for those of you listening, I'm so sorry, but I'll get back on it. Now that you said you're listening. Oh my God. That means so much. I really enjoy them. They're awesome. Oh, thank you. Well, if, Since you're a listener of the podcast, then you know what comes at the end of each episode, but I'm going to ask you the same question I ask every guest, and it is, what does women empowerment mean to you? I think to me, it just means an even playing field. I'm not someone who wants more rights or special treatment. I essentially just want to be given the same opportunities and treated the same as everybody else. Mm. I think that's all it really comes down to for me. Yeah. Agreed. I'd love that. So I guess that's the end of the episode. Maddie, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. It has been so fun chatting to you today.
Amazing. So where can our listeners find you and where can they shop at 35 millimeter co? Yeah, of course. So they can find it's www.35mmco.com. Our Instagram is at 35mm underscore co. And if you want to find me, I'm just Maddie Stefanis on Instagram. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Maddie. Beautiful. Thank you. You guys, wow. She's incredible. Madison, thank you so much for chatting with me. I absolutely love you. Everyone, do yourself a favor. Go find her on Instagram. Go find 35mm codes Instagram right now. I don't care. Pull over if you're driving. I'm just kidding. Let's support Maddie, okay? I'm so excited to see where her business is going to go. This girl has crazy drive. Can't you just tell from listening? Like, I could tell from our conversation. She's on to some pretty big things and I'm so excited to watch from the sidelines and cheer her on but you've come to the end of the episode as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode we're looking to feature a few of you guys on our Instagram and share your wins from 2021 and it'll be on our main Instagram which is at girls building empires so I'll have the link in the show notes for you to go sign up and find out how to sign up so while you're at it actually Go follow our Instagram and my personal Instagram, which is just at Madison V. Reed. But I'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the holidays this week, everyone. Have a great Christmas. Bye.